Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Our Purpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today we have some great primitive decor for you. Real quick little uh, projects, but they make a big impact for your home. We're going to start with these two lamps. I ran into a little snag later on, and I'll explain to you what that snag is. But I got these from a thrift shop. I think they were $5 a piece, solid wood. Really love the shape of them, uh, and they work great. They did not come with shades, so I had to order some on... I ordered some off Amazon. You can get a two-pack for, I don't know, it was almost $30. I think I can't believe the price of shades. It's ridiculous. But um, anyway, I got some shades that I really like, and I had them on order, and they came in while I was uh, redoing these lamps. So I just taped the ends of the cords that were closest to the lamp so that I didn't get any paint on them because I am going to be painting these black. Now this is Waverly chalk paint in ink and I gave it two coats drying in between each coat. Once the paint was all dry, I took my sandpaper and went over the higher spots on the lamp and just gave it a little bit of a distressed look. I get a lot of questions on why I distress and paint black. Number one, it sells really well in my booth and people like the distressed look and so do I. It's just my, it's my go-to. I just love adding that detail. It makes things look aged and gives it a look like it has some history. Now these are the two pack of lampshades that I got off from Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description for you if you're interested. Very nice quality, came apart and you had to put it together, but don't let that scare you. It's really easy to put together. But as I was going through this, I realized they only sent me one shade. They sent me two of everything else that I needed to put this together, but only one shade. So I did email them and I'm in the process of emailing back and forth. They're gonna send me a whole nother set, which is just wonderful. I only asked for the shade, uh, but um, I guess it's probably easier for them to send, sell the whole, or send the whole thing. So I'm just going to um, accept that and and get my, my lamps done. So I put this together just by finding the top and the bottom and of the frame part and then I'm just gonna put they're just little clips on there and a little velcro piece on the back and my suggestion is if you're gonna do this don't velcro your lampshade yet before you put the bottom part on leave that undone because it's too tight so I had to go back and undo it so that I could finish clipping on that bottom framework and there we go we got that on there and then I just then I went back and did the uh, velcro on the back of it I really love these but I did not like them on the lamp the lamp was too small for the shade or the shade was too big for the lamp and I was kind of bummed but so I'm gonna have to have uh, or find a smaller version I think these are the um, 13 high and I think the 10 will work. I have one that I've just been playing around with on it. So um, I did find, I grabbed one that I had on the lamp here on something else and uh, this one here. And I think this one fits better. So I did some measurements and I'll have to buy a pair of these. thrifted this little wire basket for I think it was a dollar at Goodwill and I really liked it it the top part there's a little rattan piece at the top that's kind of weird and I got these two little glass uh, jars with the cork in them from I, I think a yard sale last year and then I got this roll of chicken wire and I'll put a link down in the description for that if you're interested and I just cut a piece off that would fit around the outside of this little basket. I'm gonna take off that rattan thing. It's not even centered and I can't move it. It just looks very weird. I don't really understand why somebody would put that on there like that. 
but it, it could have put, been put on and then moved or who knows. But anyway, that came off really easily with my pliers. So then I grabbed my black paint and I gave just the wires a coat of black. I did tried not to get it on the rattan bottom. I did get a little bit, so I just highlighted the bottom around the edges just a little bit. I then took the piece of wire that I had cut to put around the basket and I laid that down and gave that a coat of paint on both sides as well. It was a little hard to paint because it was rolling up on me and every time I uh, went to brush on it, it would move, but it worked out okay. Now I'm gonna wrap this around my basket. I just wanna caution, if you're gonna use real chicken wire, then be very careful and probably wear gloves. This is made for crafting and it's just a little ribbon. And it, the wire is much uh, softer than your chicken wire would be. So it was easy to work with with just my fingers, but I would definitely wear gloves if I was using uh, chicken wire because it was it would be very pointy and hurt your fingers. All I did was wrap it around the wire and then uh, and then wrapped it around itself. And then I did the same thing. I wrapped it around the basket with the other end and then wrapped that around itself also. I think that looks really cute. I then took it outside and sealed it with my matte clear sealer from Rust-Oleum. And then I decided to take some twine and put the, the little wrap around the top of the handle back on, but I centered it and made it look a little bit nicer. I tried to get the writing off the sides of these bottles. It just would not come off no matter what I used and they would not scrape off either. So I'm going to take this black and tan checked material and I'm just gonna cut a piece of it to go around. I'm just gonna glue it around my bottle. Now I actually didn't cut it. I actually ripped it so that it would have the frayed edge just like the top part. And that I thought that gave it a nice look on the bottle as well. I cut a second piece to go on my other bottle and then started gluing them on. I took one of the stars that I made with my clay molds and my clay and I the one that I had grungied up and I tied it on to the basket with a piece of twine and I think that looks really cute and then I glued it on so that it would stay on even better from the front and the back. burlap napkins. I got four of them from a clearance sale that I went to recently. They were originally $4.99 on the sticker there and they were marked down to $3 and then I got them for 50% off so I got them each for $1.50. I thought it was a great deal and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with them once I found them. I'm going to clean off all the stickers, get it flat and iron this little section down flat as I can. I don't wanna to totally get rid of that line because I am gonna be using it with a, a screen print stencil. So I want to use that line as my center point. This is my stencil. My friend Tracy and her husband Dan make these. And I'm just gonna cut this down a little bit smaller to make it a little bit more manageable. I do want to keep a little bit of a border there so that I don't go over it with the paint, but this came out so cute. Wait till you see it. These stencils have a sticky side on them, so I just pull the backing off and put that right down there, and I use that 
fold in the middle as my middle line so that I know where to put my little crow. And then I just make sure that it's stuck down nice and well so that the paint does not go underneath. And then I'm using some black paint and gonna use that on my stencil. Now I checked it a bunch of times where it's sticky. I can pull up one end and have it not move on me. So I was able to peel it up a little bit and see that it wasn't quite uh, enough paint on there. So I did that several times until I had enough paint on my canvas. And then I peeled it off and there we go. It still had a little bit of a few spots and it looked a little worn, but I kind of like that. So I am going to go over it with a little bit of a small paintbrush and some paint, but I didn't fill it in fully because I don't mind it looking a little bit aged and not have the paint all over it. So once it was dry, I took the iron and a cloth and put it between the two and sealed my little crow in on my cloth. I did all four napkins exactly the same and I made sure I washed my stencil after each use and let it dry a little bit so that the stickiness would come back and it worked really well and it still could do several more I'm pretty sure. So I think these napkins are going to be great primitive towels. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed my quick, easy, and simple primitive decor projects. I hope it inspires you to find some projects of your own to do. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.